Welcome to Deadman Presents. This is our fourth episode and we're still on the airwaves. Remember, this is the only Sheffield underground music television programme in the whole world. Now, tonight, we're coming for Musical Works. This is a studio in town where we do work with young people, vulnerable people, all different types of people. If you're interested in the studio, then give us a link on the Facebook. Tonight, the show is featuring a load of Sheffield vocalists. We've got Coco doing an interview and a freestyle. We've also got AK doing the same thing. But before that, we went down to a project, My Life Project, at the Nursery Tavern, doing art in the garden. Hi, so we're here today at the Nursery Tavern on Ecclesall Road in Sheffield, and I'm here with Casper. Hiya, Casper, welcome to the show. Hi, how do you do? Uh, yep, great. So what we want to know about is what is Art in the Garden all about? Um, art in the Garden, well, uh, Art in the Garden is put on by the Nursery Tavern and My Life Project every year, around about this time of year. And all it is, it's a collection of Sheffield's, uh, you know, premier, up and coming and current uh, urban artists, street artists and graffiti artists. It's a different collection, you know, you've got guys doing real life stuff, you've got guys doing wild styles, you've got guys doing, you know, different types of artwork and street art and that sort of stuff. So it shows a real variety. Uh, come together every year to decorate the Nursery Tavern's beer garden uh, and it gives the public a chance to see the faces behind the talent and, you know, actually meet some of the artists and ask a few questions uh, and that sort of stuff. Uh, and so what's My so Life Project then? The My Life Project is an urban arts and media company. Uh, community is that your company? company That's uh, a company I'm a part of, yeah. Um, so I'm one of the, the gentlemen that, you know, comes along and facilitates like workshops to young people. So we work with like young people in Sheffield. Um, like youth centres and yeah, youth Yeah, we work clubs. at youth centres, youth clubs, uh, that sort of thing. We also uh, work with schools in the daytime. We've got a classroom in Parsons Cross. We're based up at Sawworks in Parsons Cross. Uh, so if people want to come along and learn graffiti art in sessions and that sort of stuff, then they can do. Uh, we don't just do graffiti art, though. We do, like, DJing workshops, do, uh, you know, uh, different sorts of, like, music production workshops, breakdance workshops, dance So workshops. if somebody was interested in hiring your services, how yes. would they find out? They would uh, look for us either on the internet or, you know, you can Google us. Uh, or if you go on uh, Facebook and you just type in My Life Project, uh, and press like that's our like page and like we get a lot of people getting in touch with us through that way or if right. you just uh, you know email me at casper at mylifeproject.org.uk then that's another way of getting in touch with okay, me okay cool so what's your take on the sheffield graffiti scene at the moment is there uh, anybody that stands out for you personally everybody stands out at the moment there's no one person in front of anyone else at the moment everybody's pulling together uh, and it's a, you know there's a real sense of unity at the moment everyone's painting uh, they're doing nice stuff. Uh, there's a lot of places to paint in Sheffield. The council is, uh, you know, very happy with it because everything. There's like a really fine balance. People communicating, stuff getting done properly, uh, and that sort of thing. So and all that, the town centre stuff then, because there's loads of graffiti in town centre. So every, everybody has permission to do that from the council. Not off the council. Uh, it's more to do with private landowners. So it's whoever owns the walls and the land yeah. uh, approaching the people who own the land, getting permission off them. Uh, and then through the private landowners, you know, presenting them with some artwork. I've done this before, uh, and then you know, doing something nice, and then they see, yeah, I really like it, and then you know, more stuff comes from that. But the council seems all right with it all, uh, and that sort of thing, as long as it's not bothered step on anyone's toes and that sort of stuff. You know, it's fine. So, what's your opinion on graffiti having a bad sort of reputation for being vandalism? Um, you know, everyone's entitled to their own opinion and that sort of stuff, and you know, there's. In graffiti art itself, there's two sides, the illegal, then there's the stuff that, you know, you have permission to do and that sort of thing. But graffiti is what it is, you know, it's, uh, there's individuals within the scene, uh, so it's all down to the individual. If someone, an individual goes out and does some tags where they're not supposed to, you know, it's going to annoy some people. I have my own personal opinion on graffiti art, I embrace it all and that sort of thing. However, uh, the My Life Project, we promote, you know, the positive sides to stuff like that, but we do understand, you know, that this sort of stuff goes on uh, and that sort of thing. However, you know, when we work with kids and groups and stuff like that, we teach them the law around graffiti in the UK and that sort of thing. Can you give us a very brief outline of, like, the law and graffiti so that people understand it? If you do it where you don't have permission and you get caught, you'll get arrested. If you do it where you do have permission, uh, you know, uh, no, you probably won't get any trouble. You might get a commission <laughs> out of it or, you know, so the message there is basically get permission. Yeah, get permission. <laughs> if you go out and do it where there isn't permission, obviously there'll be consequences in the eyes of the law uh, and that sort of thing. And that's pretty much, you know, the be all and end all of the law around graffiti itself. Right, OK. Well, thanks ever so much for your time. So well, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at some of the artwork around 
the garden and uh, check it out. Feel free. Hi, so I'm here today with Paul Skay, um, and he's part of H2I, which is a graffiti collective from Sheffield. So do you want to tell us a little bit about H2I and the collective and everything? Uh, H2I is a group of like-minded people from Sheffield, uh, a couple of guys from out of town in it as well. Uh, like-minded people, just like going out painting walls. What Having inspires you then? What, what inspires uh, you to do graffiti, or what originally inspired you to get involved uh, Originally, in vandalising inside of it. But as I've got older, got kids myself, it's more about going out and doing a piece of art. Team Walking more away, challenge, art challenge, yeah, challenging myself with something I want to do. Is yeah. there a message in the things that you uh, grab? Uh, not really, not really. Sometimes, a little. What about your remembrance piece? Uh, for those that don't know where it is, it's actually near Yellow Arch in uh, Sheffield City Centre. So that was inspired by... Yeah. Uh, my granddad, he were in war and always feels strong about that, that time of year. I always think of my granddad and wanted to do it. I had a word with a few of lads and Dave obviously got granddads who fought in war and it, would, it just suited everybody to do it. So, yeah, we're in, I were nice actually to there show with you. you yeah, were, you I were. was there that day. Was had yeah, sandwiches and, um, and uh, The Sheffield Star came down and did a piece on it as well, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. So, we're good. Good day. Good yeah, day brilliant. All right then. Thanks a lot for that. Thank you very Cheers. much. Yeah, it's AK, Dead Man Presents, SLTV, Sheffield, Scott Fat, Lord of the Max Champion. Yeah, I wanna get rich like 50. If not, then I die train like 50. I was on it before Wiley, 50, 50. Still be on it when I'm 50. I ain't a farmer, but I love. So when I want five, it was 950. I told him, knock me off 50. Meet me just before 7650. Eh? You think when I pain, don't keep me. Look at that, I never told him, nine or 50. When it goes, won't come back like a boomerang. I'm like a body kid with a frisbee. Eh? When you wanna buy, don't twist me. I'm a cool guy, normal. But if you wanna diss me, it's this wreck. Right, this is Alex Deadman here with AK. You all right? Yes, I'm good. What's happening? I'm good. I'm good. Just trying to keep myself alive right now. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your history, how it all started for you. Um, music started for me um, growing up, listening to like Garage it started off with. Yeah. And then Grime emerged. And then seeing people like Dizzy Rascal, Boy in the Corner, stuff like that, I, I really wanted to get involved in within music. At first, I'd, I didn't know if I wanted to do write lyrics, yeah. be a DJ. I wanted to be a DJ at first, to be honest. Yeah. But then, um, yeah, I followed on to the lyrics, went to a school where a couple of friends, we, we all shared the same passion, so it was like, let, let's form a little crew. So we did that called NFS through the youth ages of going through Sheffield scene. Mm -hmm. It was like well known mm -hmm. um, and pursued it now up until we're in Scum Fam. Cool. So yeah. So when it, when bats was Scum Fam for? Scum Fam, there was an original Scum Fam back in the day, yeah. um, but they all went their own separate ways for other reasons. Yeah. But um, the new Scum Fam what come around was 2012. Yeah. Um, basically that all started from, Tez Kid was on Lord of the Mics yeah. 3. And um, he said at that time, Sheffield's got a big buzz, so yeah. what we need to do is put all the good MCs or let's put all the eggs in one basket, yeah. so to speak, yeah. and let's all use the same hype. So we did that, and like further on from 2012 we're in 2014, now we've just been making big moves from, from there. Good. All right, so Lord of the Mics, good little link there. Yeah, yeah, Lord of the Mics. So tell us, for those who don't know, AK's Clash to Lord of the Mics, and it's come out on Lord of the Mics 6. Yeah, yeah, it was on 6. About two months ago. No, it was last month, yeah. Last, last month, month it's yeah. come out. Yeah, yeah. So tell us a bit about the whole experience, you in Jammer's Basement. Yeah, uh, Lord of Max was good, man. Um, Jammer's Basement, tiny, <laughs> a million lights, temp <laughs> loads of people, the temperature was high. It was it was, it was, was crazy, but it was a good good experience for me, like watching Lord of the Max growing up and like as an MC going through my career, like watching things like the Lord of, Ma Lord of the Max. Yeah. Um, was brilliant like to put yourself in that position as yeah, well yeah. and i was like pleased to be in the basement because half of the half of the clashes what run the dvd was a uh, live performance yeah so i think i would have still enjoyed the lord of the max experience but i think because it was in the basement it was extra spe special for me yeah like i knew that this is something i watched before yeah and i was keen to do it you know yeah. what i'm saying 
Well, it's an important place, isn't it? Was yeah, it, definitely. It's, it's it's legendary for like the grime scene. If yeah. anyone talks about the grime scene, the dungeon would probably come up there in the top ten. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's good, man. So if that's like indie band going to Glastonbury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same kind of experience for grime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's in Jammer's place. <laughs> yeah, big up Jammer, big up Jammer. No one I said no one to me, no one. Scum for man says to no one. No one I said no one to me, no one. Scum for man says to no one. No one I said no one to me, no one. Scum for man says to no one. I'm a mug, it takes one to no one. So why try hype? I like your wife. She's a cute one, isn't she? See you heard for the grapevine that she likes crying, but you think she only likes in there. Oh no, she's been telling you all sorts. Hiding texts and phone calls like a young teenager were. But she's been taking them photos Cause she's got somebody in mind, somebody she likes And if he happens to be small then why? With bars you know who I'm talking right? I turn your day to an awkward night Look mate, I don't wanna brawl or fight Can't fight over here all your life But hide your wife Cause I like your wife, control your wife So also, whilst on the class thing uh, You've done a don't, a don't Flop recently Yeah, yeah, I did Don't Flop as well um, I did Don't Flop the same day that Lord of the Max actually came out um, yeah, so, and we clashed at Don't Flop. The same place where I clashed at Don't Flop was where Big H and P Money clashed for Lord of the Mics as well. So it, it was a good venue, yeah. good setup, uh, well run by Er uh, and Don't Flop and all the rest of the team. Yeah. And yeah, it was a big clash. I clashed XP from Manchester High Rise. Yeah. Uh, everyone knows about XP, is well known in the scene. And yeah, uh, yeah it was kind of something like AK vs Villain from Lord of the Mics. It was like, you knew that it was going to be a good lineup. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So that's what he delivered, I delivered. Yeah. The crowd liked that, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So sick. Tell us a little, with the experience of clashing, often on the face of it, you're proper going for it. You, you're going in, there's no whole bars. What's it like when the, when the cameras stop? Do you shake hands? Do you, well, you just stand in the corner giving each other evil? Uh, well, me and Villain, uh, we was cool before the other mics. Yeah. Like before our names even got put in any hat. Yeah. So it was like, when our names got drawn against each other, we was both like, ah, oh, do we really want to do this? But we knew that it was a good platform and we knew we had to take advantage of yeah, it. Yeah, so yeah. Um, we just said, obviously, let's treat this like footballers. Footballers are friends, yeah, but yeah. once you step on a f- football pitch yeah. for 90 minutes, you, if you're playing on the opposite side, you can't be friends, you know what I mean? Yeah. You just have to play and, and, and try and make your team the winners. Yeah. So that's that That was the attitude where I went in with Villain. But XP, I didn't really know him beforehand, so yeah. it was like... Um, I could go in a bit more aggressive yeah. than what I could with Villain, yeah. if you know what I'm saying. Not that I took it lightly with Villain, yeah. but out of respect, yeah. you don't say certain things or you don't yeah. go down de- certain routes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, But yeah, it, it was good, man. I, I like to stay cool anyway. I don't like bitter competitions. Yeah. I like good competitions, like to say, you've got something good going for you, I have as well, yeah. let's race, you know what yeah. I mean, kind of thing, rather yeah. than like, I'm trying to be better than you kind yeah. of thing, you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. I like that kind of competition, not not the rivalness. Yeah, because yeah. there are occasions, there are probably a couple of videos I can think of. Yeah, yeah, co- we know what those videos yeah, yeah, are. Yeah, 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 of course. Where it can spill over, and it's there's a degree of professionalism. There. Yeah, of course, course. Good, all right. So, nice little link to the radios as well. You done rinse FM. Yeah, yeah, rinse FM was uh, did that a couple of weeks ago uh, with DJ Spyro, big up Spyro. He just phoned me the night before. He was like, I've got radio. I've just watched load of the mics. I've, I've got radio tomorrow. I've got a free slot. Yeah. Do you want to come down? I was like. Yeah, man, I'd, I'd fly down there and he was like, I got down there and he was like, people in London are like 20 minutes away and they don't want to take these opportunities and you're like three hours up the motorway <laughs> and you want to fly straight down the next day. And I was like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm there, I'm, I'm, I'm hungry That's for good. it. People in London think that other parts of London are extremely long way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine three hours up and down the motorway, it's crazy. <laughs> it's a mentality, isn't it? It's not yeah. far at all. Nah. Just jump in your car. So all in all, pretty good year. Lord of yeah, the Mics, Rinse FM. Stuff on Radio One with Toddler, don't flop. So what what are you gonna do next? Uh, well, basically, what it is next, I've do, I've I've achieved everything what I, I said I wanted to happen, which was I wanted to co- cover the main two platforms of clashing because clashing the clashing culture is coming big now within grime and mm-hmm. even hip hop and urban music, like people want to see that tenseness and battling. Mm-hmm. So I think Lord of the Mics and Don't Flop covered covered my yeah. scale of of music. So I, I did that. And then I did the radios as well. I've done one extra. I've done Rinse Firm. Yeah. I've done all of the big radios. So it's like everyone knows about me now. So it's time to start putting out good music. People, music what people can enjoy. Yeah. So uh, I've got a single coming soon called I Like Your Wife. Yeah. It's a bit cheeky. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, Sounds but, it. yeah, but <laughs> it's good, man. Everyone, everyone what I played it to enjoyed it. Like, 
people are saying we can play this in cars, we can go to it, we can imagine this in a dance, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's good, man. Got a good good video lined up for it. Cool. So I've got some good cameos for it as well. Cool. So it should be big. And then on top of that, I've got a, a little cheap, cheeky mixtape called Throw Ways cool. that's going to come out for free download. And then we've got the Scum working on the Scum Fan mixtape. So that's cool. going to be big as well. Busy? Yeah, very busy. I'm always busy. Okay. When I move ladder, yeah. When I skit, I don't chew back up. Small wheat in peace, I don't choose back up. Keep my nose clean on the weekends, because I don't want to ski to be F like Schumacher. Your favorite MC, I'll spin him. I'll give a Star Wars, but I ain't true back up. I'm badder than bad, can you do better? I'm heavy on the mic, that's a true matter. I rep Scum Fan and I rep Grime. Part I've seen, then it's not where you matter Cause you chat, shh, you a pool chatter And now you wanna chat like you run this game Well come on fam, you're not a baller A team like yours could use matter But AK man a top striker Man a turn into Hulk like Bruce Banner Yeah, what, 3k dot Only got two years, probably a year in the tag But I ain't tryna see my team take days off Tryna see my team take off Yeah, scum fam, you know what it is SLTV, Dead Man Presents Right, I'm here with Coco, Sheffield artist. We've already seen Coco on the show mm -hmm. with his video, Party on the Weekend. But we thought we'd get you back for a little chat yeah, and a freestyle as well. Cool, cool. So what do you do? Um, I'm a singer, songwriter and music producer. Um, I've been writing music for about eight years now and producing for around six years, yeah. Cool. So why did you start producing? Uh, it's just basically from my influences, um, listening to music around the age of... Um, 18, like grime music, um, people like Skepta, your Wileys, um, just that whole whole culture of, of music and um, being able to write and make the own your own beat sort of thing. Then behind it, just it sort of sort of spurred me on to want to do that as well. Do you know what I mean? Is it about having it's a degree of control? So if you want to rap on something, you've yeah. got it straight away, you can do it. Yeah, that as well. Like um, obviously with. Having the skill to obviously produce my own music, I don't have to go and sort of ask producers, can you make me this beat, can you do that? I'd rather do it myself, so... Um, and obviously, if, if anything ever did happen, um, if I did sort of get big or whatever, off any sort of music I produce, and all the rights go to me, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, good that you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Am I right in thinking that you had something signed to CBBC? I did, yeah. Tell us a bit about that. Um, basically, they got in contact with me for um, a children's programme, which is um, which was on October last year. Um, what it was is that um, I'd had a beat which was featured on one of my mixtapes yep. um, called Luga. Yep. Um, and someone from the BBC got in touch with me and um, just basically said, we like that beat, we want to use it for the programme. Yeah. Mm. So how how is it that CBBC music <laughs> people are trolling through Sheffield mm. grime mixtapes to find their audio? To be fair, I was, I was thinking to myself, why has this guy got in contact with me, of all people, out of all the producers in the world? But I just I didn't really question it that much. I just thought it's a good thing anyway. Um, hopefully more things like this can happen in the future. Yeah. It's a good look for myself. And it's probably a good, um, for the producers out there, it's mm. probably a good example of why it's mm. important to have your stuff signed on to PRS because yeah. presumably right. you earn a bit of money through it. Yeah. Well, I'm still waiting for um, that to come through, but hopefully it should be a nice amount of BBC in it. So yeah, well, it gets used on a lot of tracks. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Great, that's excellent. It. Exactly. So, Sheffield Grind Producers, yeah. your first port of call for your <laughs> rhythms. I mean, C if CBBs used yeah. it. CBBs, yeah, CBBC. Was yeah. it CBBs or CBBC? Uh, CBBC. CBBC, yeah. right. So, mm. you need to get on the youngest, get yeah, on the definitely. CBBs. Send the, send the word out there. Cool. Definitely. So when you first broke through, what was your what do you have a sort of standout track or a moment? Which crew were you with? Tell us a bit about when you first well, broke through. Well to be through. fair, I've, um obviously back in my younger days I I did have um quite a few tracks out on the roads for people my age. I think that's where my buzz primarily came from. Yeah. Um and obviously as the years went by, uh, people started to recognise me for my own solo sort of um acting, putting out my own music. Um, I've always just been being on it, really. I always tell people, even if I don't make it within music, I'll always make music because I love it. Yeah. It's not for the money and things like that, do you know yeah. what I mean? I'll always make music because I love it, so, yeah. Anybody that's making that's what I'd sort of... Um, the advice I'd give to people, don't make it for money. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do it, put 100% passion in them for the love, do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Cool. So what are you up to now, then? Right about now, obviously, I've put out my single, obviously, Party on the Weekend, which you can buy on iTunes, the video's there. Um, just in the middle of recording, like a bit more music, and I'm probably gonna put another EP out. Um, I'm just trying to get a lot of beats made by myself, so I can put that out and obviously have everything done by me. Cool. Um, but yeah, man, just keep a lookout. I'm always updating my my Facebook, Twitter, and things like that. So just cool. keep a lookout. Yeah. And what about other Sheffield artists that you're working with? You wanna give any um, big ups to? To be fair, I've not really got anyone in the pipeline I'm working with, but big up clubs and space because 
they're putting Sheffield on the map. They're doing everything they're supposed to be doing. Um, just fingers crossed for them guys, that my bro, my brothers. You know what I mean. So hopefully they'll go far, man. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Mm. Well, hopefully we're gonna get them on the show. Yeah, man. definitely. Stop being lazy, man. Come on. <laughs> just man. get down here. <laughs> just a record. I don't think it's lazy. Nah, 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 nah. nah. They know I've got love for them. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> definitely. Wicked. Well, we're gonna see a bit of a freestyle and hear some of the tunes. So yeah. Thanks a lot. No problem. Cheers. Yeah. Coco, Sheffield Life TV right about now. I'll tell Alex, the big man. I'll tell the Sheffield crew. Hey Mumbo, listen. Whoa, go on. Check, I'm on this thing like Rambo. You're not fan though. You're talking like you don't like Mando. But what I go on for you, I don't understand though. I'm just trying to put my banana in your mango. I don't want to hurt you. That's not a plan though. Just want to see what you can do with a mambo. You know it's got a tech tool for the tango. I got a thing for the spice like Nando. Gymnastics, can you wind up? Turn out, I tell you if you can take it from your eye though. Pure friction burns from the line though. You better not charge like a rhino. If you're never gonna do the catwalk, how you gonna shout it? Nicki Minaj has got you talking the loudest. Long thing, give me your bell when you're about it. Come and get a drink from the fountain. What is yeah. I'm more tired. Hey, my book. Yeah. Whoa, go on. Large of the beat. Fit us. Couple gals still. Listen, TikTok, I'm waiting. Till your bread jeans, them stop hating. I might show a bit of love on a rare one, but why do you think we're dating? Raise the bar when I bring that weight in, and I might just bring my mate in. And if you can't understand what I'm saying, take it now, take it, cause I've start translating. See, I'ma make you like I'm Jason. It's not a joke, I'ma make that blatant. And when I said that I never wanted to hurt you, a lie, mate, wait for the hospital patient. Mm, you gotta give me that rating. I stay cool like I went ice skating. And when you stop me shy, come on, all over the guy, I'ma might take.